Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to the JLT Podcast. Welcome back, crew. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. And if you are in Southern California, I hope you're not getting blown to bits. <laughs> because we are, and it's crazy because it's being windy everywhere. Like, we just came back from, I don't even know where that is. Like, Los Angeles area. No, like, Malibu area. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't even know. So, yeah, we were right by the beach. And it was so windy over there, too. So, I think it's just windy everywhere. Everywhere today. And these are the worst types of days because it's like it, it causes traffic. A whole bunch of stuff goes in the road. Like literally rocks can fly out your window because you all, the de- all the debris that goes in the road on the freeways. And then you can't sleep. On top of that, oh you gosh. can't sleep. No, it's really bad at night because like it's so terrible. All you hear is banging on your windows, like in your house windows. And like all I can think about is like the cars outside. It's just a whole thing. But I hope you guys are having an amazing Thursday today. It is currently Thursday at 4.20 p.m. <laughs> so two hours before you're watching this, give or take, if Jakey uploads this fast. Babe, what headset am I? One you're, or two? You're number one. Oh, I just, sorry, I probably blew your freaking ears out. All right, there we go. Okay, so much better. Do you know what? I have like the the weirdest mind because I think of other podcasts and then I think of our podcast, like the difference that we have compared to everyone else. So there's like different camera angles and I feel like we're the minimal podcast. We're the most like calm, chill vibes ever. Like, Dude, it's crazy because we be doing the most for our YouTube vlogs, but when it comes to podcasts, we're the middest podcast. I don't think middest because I feel like we're very interesting, but I think like um, low, low tier editing because it's not edited at all. Yeah, like low production quality, yes. Because I watch other podcasts and I'm interested in them. And I see like when someone's talking, the camera automatically goes and captures their face. But with us, like you see the whole frame, the same frame, the whole podcast, (laughs) which is funny because um, the other podcast, you can see me. If you like go through it and scroll the entire time, you see me constantly picking up my coffee and it goes down slowly, slowly. After that, I put my straw in that and then her coffee goes slowly and slowly down. Oh, yeah, because you'll drink both of our coffees. Yeah. Yeah, our podcast is definitely not very like high top tier. And I think... There's a beauty in that. But I think uh, maybe one day we'll change that up. We've been podcasting in our house right now just because we've been really, really busy. So it's been really hard to go to the little podcast studio. But we're, we're making it work. But anywho, we have been honestly like I'm not even going to lie this entire week. So I filmed an entire week in my life, no weekend in my life on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> and it is Thursday today. And I've been working on a different project that I have you know, that I'm working on. But other than that, like I've just been focusing on me. And I think that I'm really prepping my body for what's to come because we're about to have the most chaotic, crazy month, I think in a while. Like I know February was bad, but I think this might be worse. I'm not ready for it at all. I'm I'm not, like, I have no preparation gone in my mind at all, but I know it's going to be fun. It's going to be an adventure. Mm. It's going to be so much fun and I'm really excited. But next month, you guys, like, a part of me just wants to like rent this place out, call it a day and just like Be not gone. even pay a freaking mortgage. Cause there's no point. <laughs> like literally no point. Like when things get busy for us, like we are in and out, in and out, like all the time. And this next month that's coming up, we're doing some really exciting stuff. Like you guys aren't even going to believe it. Like that's probably the last thing on your mind. And We've been mentally prepared. I've been mentally prepared. And I've been really enjoying my house because it's going to be crazy. And I feel like since we've been enjoying the house more and like not really focused on uh, uh, posting videos or filming videos in general, we've been focusing on our time on the dogs. And yeah. like you guys don't see them in the frame right now. They're they're a little tired out. We were just out for a little bit. But the whole week and week and a half, they've been tired. We've taken them to the park almost every single day. And every when- Not almost. Every single day they've gone to the park. Whether that's in the morning, in the night, or both times. And it's not like their usual runs or walks around the uh, our neighborhood. It's like actually going to the park and being there for like one to two hours. If you follow us on Snapchat, you can see it on, I think, that story posted yesterday. Dude, they're just tired and ran out. It's like the coolest thing because we've really been able to give them our 120%. And like, I've been doing more like back-end stuff, which is like a lot of things you guys don't see. It's just like back-end, a planning of everything booking stuff which is damn near the worst thing ever like if you are a coordinator for a living like my you're you go or someone's personal assistant too dude i don't know how those people do it because (laughs) it is i feel like i'm mine and your personal assistant and it is crap like because it's not that you just get to 
you know, planning vacations. No, it's not like that. It's like you have to coordinate things. And if and when things aren't fitting, it's like I just want to pull my hair out. <laughs> like, it, you know, we're landing too late. So now we're missing this. So we have to do this. And th- and we're literally taking an entire detour. We're going all the way to Arizona, coming back to Sacramento, and then doing the same thing because we need to land at a certain time in order to meet the quota of this. If now we have to pay an extra $1,000, it's just like so much. And sometimes I feel like trying to make things fit and then like, booking everything else and like you know what we're doing is so crazy that you need to really do your research on it because if you don't the time messes up everything and you pay extra money not even just that but babe we could damn near die so you need to (laughs) really do it's just so much do do you want to let them know what we're doing Uh, no are you sure no i thought that's what we were gonna do no maybe like the week that it's like gonna happen because it's it's still far out in the in like the planning so I would, you know, our version of Far Out. <laughs> our version. I thought that's what we were going to talk about. I know, but I kind of don't want to give it out because, like, I want them to be really hyped for it. So tell them, like, the day before we leave. Okay, okay, that's fine. You then. know, I feel like that'll be good. Anyway, we have been dealing with. Do you want to tell them where we were at today? We have been dealing with car issues car issues yeah and i feel like it's gonna be really really soon when we actually get to speak about the big ass elephant in the room which i'm so excited to speak about it but i literally just can't and that's the reason why we haven't spoke about it for legal issues by the way guys like i know you guys have been commenting a whole bunch of stuff in the comments and stuff but we're not not answering them on purpose. No, but I told them like i feel like people really like to pick at things like that they know because like I was on live one time and like those were all the comments right and I was like guys I can't speak about it because like legally I can't speak about it and then people were just still so it's like they know what they're doing and they'll like instigate in a way and it makes me so mad like I'll literally erase the comments so fast because it's (laughs) like you know damn well like I've responded to so many people and like they'll know but they'll still push at it like we literally cannot speak on it because I trust me, I'm just as fed up as you guys. Like you have not a clue. Like it has been the worst months of our lives. Like it has been terrible. But anyway, so we're hoping to be towards the end of it, but then again, I don't know because because we it, don't know. It brings another season in our life. Like it brings another adventure of us going to look at cars, looking at I know at these it things. does. And it's the most it's the best time because we can go sit in a million cars and we're like, all right, out of all these, which one would be the best fit for us? And those are my favorite times. Like, I can't wait for me to uh, do more stuff like this in the future when we do this together. Like, more often, dude. More often. You know, it's crazy because I, I was like, after, like, my GLE, like, what car am I going to get? But then that's crazy but because how close-minded, how close-minded we were. Like, okay, this brand's on top. Like, nothing's going to beat this car. And then you open your mind and you're like, Dude, this brand is like, is mid, if anything, because. All right. Nah, 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 be honest. All right. Be honest. What do you mean? I loved my car. Okay, but but listen, it had a lot of stuff, but I I don't know. You told me that you had like a whole driving experience driving this, uh, the other brand that you're talking about. Yes, it was a very, I loved this other, other car. But something about my little AMG is just. Dude, your AMG is so fucking fire. I loved it. Something about it was just, it hit different. If you guys have any guesses on what car it might be, let us know in the comments. We really want to know your guesses. Watch someone say like. No, no, no. Not, because it would be cool. Like someone says a minivan. That would be dope, bro. Having, oh, I would gladly take a minivan. Dude. Gladly. I remember growing up, um, I had, I had uh, what was it called? A Mexican, I had Mexican uh, grandparents, right? And their car was a minivan, but the radio would only play Spanish music. And at the time I didn't understand it. And we'd go to like the grocery stores. Like it just gives me core memories. Like I correlate minivans to like my little uh, to door slamming the. No, 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 no. This yeah. one, like you pull a tab. It was like the probably like the first generation of the new ones. The ones that were always like green. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it was like a green blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we had that you one, but yank that shit back. You have to yank it hard, but it only goes up to like right here, and then automatically opens. So you're like, yeah, no, buddy. All I remember is the ones you grab and you. Okay, I think you're talking. I think you're thinking about the ice cream truck ones. No, babe, they're what? green and they look. Wait, maybe. Yeah, no, but, is, not, but it's not an ice cream no, no, truck. No, no, no. This it's is the from- new, the new version of the old ones, like the oldest one, right? But the new one. I don't know, but it always had crispy paint. It, 
<laughs> it, was, it had crispy paint. And you would grab it and you would yank it. I remember that sound. Like, it's that crispy sound of, like, the <laughs> thing running back. And then it would, like, slam while it was open. Okay, well, this one, this one had a little button. So, if you push a button, it, go, it closes Bougie by itself. Man. I, I know. I don't know how, how they had it, bro. Okay, but Bougie. they had it. And doing the grocery trips and that stuff, like... Brings me the memories of me being little, like stress free and all that stuff. Imagine we pulled up in a minivan now. No, if I ever got a that would be that would be perfect for the dogs. Don't lie. You no, know, Jake. Then we'd have to fill it up with dogs. That's a, that's you a good have, idea. You can't have a minivan without ten gold retrievers. <laughs> you can't. That would be an empty minivan. Hey, then then we're gonna have to get a what's it called an upgrade to a bus. Oh, <gasps> dude, that's my dream. Buying a school bus, Jake. I would be the happiest person in the world driving a school bus. Can you buy those? You could buy a school bus. But like the retired ones, right? Mm -hmm. I bet those bitches break down every two seconds. That's why they're always abandoned in deserts and shit. <laughs> the maintenance probably goes crazy. Yeah, that's what I would imagine. Because why is so many school buses like abandoned on the side of the road? Always. Anytime you see an abandoned car, it's a fucking school bus. It is a school or a, or a van. Or a van. Damn. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> we're, we're picking the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, cars here. Well, what about, are they making like new buses? Like, can you buy a new bus? I think electric buses. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure, like... Well, I don't give a shit. I'm pretty sure you could buy a brand new bus, like 2024 bus. Well, not that new. But also not the yellow bitches that break down every two seconds. Like, something <laughs> in the middle, you know? Yeah, we're trying to be in our magic... Oh, no, no, our... What's it called? Miss Frizzle era. Jake, imagine that, okay? You have... How many rows do those things have? Like, 10? 10? 15? Dude, I don't even know. I was going to the back with the long... One long seat. The long one? As long as you didn't get where the tire goes, that bitch would get hot. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? I I would never go on that one. No, I would be on the outside oh of it. Oh my god, dude! I would freaking punch the air when that was my robe because your feet are up and it. Gets oh, you're hot. uncomfortable. I bet yeah. it gets hot. I it didn't know hot. that. You didn't know no. that? Yeah, it gets really, really, really hot because that's. I'm pretty sure that's either it maybe isn't the fucking. That should tire. be maybe that should be else. illegal. Bro. It has to be because I got burnt so many times, bro. Mid ass school district. No, but I think that imagine having a big ass bus, right, and then you could fill it with. Like dogs, my family, your family, everybody just goes on a trip. That'd be <laughs> so cool. Put my dad to drive. That'd be awesome. Dude, put all the dogs in the back and then everyone in the middle. And then that'd be oh so sick. Oh my gosh, stop because you're giving me an idea. <laughs> That's genius. Any buses for sale, we let call me it, know. We'll call it the battle bus. The battle bus for <laughs> Damn. Oh man, that'd be so cool. But anyway, we have been doing some... Car shopping. Some car shopping, and I've been vlogging like everything. I'm documenting everything for you guys. Like this is gonna, I'm gonna give you a banger story think time. Of, think of the BBL video, but in a car edition. In a car edition, something. No, not that cool. It's like gonna be a lot shorter, but it's gonna be a really good vlog. And I'm basically documenting everything. Like, oh, yesterday was a freaking terrible day. I had a huge argument it's, with insurance. It was it's just an the emotional. Worst thing ever. It's an emotional train. That's what it is. Oh my god, it was the worst thing in the world. But we're moving closer to getting a new vehicle and i'm so happy but we looked at some today you guys and i like i really thought i was never gonna find a car that i loved again like i was like that's it the amg is forever like that's just my all-time baby and then i saw this car and honestly why did we even go look at this car i'm not gonna say why because then it's gonna expose the brand but do you want to just tell them the brand no they have to <gasps> guess no, right, nah. well, we need to keep that a secret yeah right, you have to guess damn we're keeping too many secrets this podcast yeah keep the beam a guess I say it? Stop. <laughs> okay, I would, that's something I've not... Wait, let me not put that out there. No, no, don't say it. Don't say it. That yeah, yeah, don't car. say it. Don't say it. But I just think that BMW is more like male, masculine vibes. I'd cop a Beamer. Of course. I would love for you to cop a Beamer. But I would also cop a Mercedes. Because <laughs> Mercedes is just that girl. I love Mercedes. We're narrowing it down. Chill, chill, chill. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, so I really like this brand. And I always was like, nah. That could never be me because they all look the same. And just like, I feel like I was just not for I the was, vibes. I was the biggest hater on that. You were. You were always talking trash. Even when I told you I was thinking about it, you're like, mm. And then, man, go and you go visit and like see the stuff that this car has. And you're like, wow. Now that's why the price tag is so high. It makes sense. And I feel like we've always. um, Okay, so there's two. No, there's a few brands that. Everything's more expensive on these brands, okay? And I'm going to name one of them. So when you try to go get a Porsche, these cars are, like, expensive. Like, they're really, really, really pricey. And it's crazy because a Mercedes in, like, a BMW, they're also pricey, right? They're all pricey cars. They're all luxury brands. But, like, the difference between, like, Porsche, it's Porsche, right? Yeah, Porsche, Porsche. I'm just going to say Porsche because I'm going to say ah uh, every time. So <laughs> Porsche, right? 
is like a whole different level. And it's crazy because like, you wouldn't think like I wouldn't, I don't know anything about cars. Okay. So when I go into it, right, I'm just like, you know, Mercedes and BMW and Porsche, they're all expensive cars and they're probably like around the same, you know what I mean? Like you go to Honda and then you go to like Toyota and they're the cars that are usually the same size are like the same price, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like my blazer is like the same price of like a CRV, the, the Honda, right? So they're all like in the same, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I get you. But when it comes to like luxury brands, dude, the price difference from a Mercedes or like a BMW to like a Porsche is crazy. Like maybe because it's more of a prestigious brand, more of a classy brand. And like you don't see a lot of people just have Porsche, right? Like I don't see that often. You always see people, oh, I got a Mercedes. Oh, I got a BMW or I got an Audi, like that kind of stuff. But you don't really see people like, oh, I got a Porsche and I get it now. And I didn't know because I hadn't looked into it. But when you start getting pricey, I'm like, damn, these people are on a different level. Like, like the the AMG, the, the GLE 63 is the highest trim of the SUV, right? Until you get to like the big boys. And then, yeah. so the same, that's the same size as the Porsche Cayenne, right? Like around there, te- technically. Give or take, yeah. Okay, so then that that Porsche Cayenne's highest trim is almost like 30 to 40K more than yeah. the GLE's price. And it's crazy. Yep. It, yeah. it, it's, it's actually insane to me because not even the price, not even the MSRP, right? When you go to, like, pricing for, like, leases, just out of this world, it's crazy. But it's not just Porsche. There's a few other brands that are, like, in that same category. So this brand that we were looking at is, like, in that same, you know, field. Are you fucking kidding me, Jacob? (laughs) Jake's just scratching Ellie's (laughs) underbelly with his freaking foot. Um, And so we were just kind of like, no, like, that's dumb. Like, we're not paying all that money for that car. But then we saw the car. And we folded. We uh, fell in like, love. Like big time fold. I think this is the most we folded for a car, huh? This fast. This fast for sure, yeah. Because there's like, this car has, I don't know, I don't know if I should, the car has amenities. Dude, the feel of the car. You know how like there's those TikTok people that are like go to cars and then start like hitting the window or like cracking the windows? The build, the build the quality. Build quality. And you know how like most cars are like just cracking and shit. Dude, you go <laughs> it sounds to like, like this. It goes like that. So a variation of that. Yeah, so. You know how it does that? Dude, we went inside this car, no cracks, no dinks, no, no everything felt then, high quality. And then after we, we came back in the blazer, I'm like touching something. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's crazy because, you know, you, I always thought, you know, cars are the same thing. They're just different brands, and different prices. different brands and prices. It's like, you know, my shirt, your shirt, same freaking shirt, different price tags. But wait, and then you really think and see that stuff, and I'm like, wait, this has to be way better quality than this. <laughs> like, I never really understood it. And it doesn't mean whatever's like under the hood could be trash. Totally could be trash. As long as it feels good in the, in the inside, then that's fine. <laughs> you know, I just need it to last me. If it blows up while I'm driving. Wouldn't be the fucking first time. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's fine. It is what it is. Honestly, I just want to be happy. Nah, th- okay, so if you guys are seeing us and like, you're wondering why we're getting brighter and darker and brighter and darker. The clouds are moving like crazy. I think the wind's blowing the clouds. So that's a, that's a little key point right there. I think they need to stop fucking with the weather. That's what I think. Bro, the planes. You want to go to comp- into conspiracy theories? Dude, Jake nah. just told me that there was a plane that was going to Sydney that nose... Nose dived. Nose dived. A Boeing yeah. plane. I feel like we're going to get on, on censored TikTok. I mean, on censored YouTube, but fuck it. Well, I don't know enough, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But, like, uh, I've heard past, like, a uh, couple days, the past week, actually, like, four Boeing acts, um, incidents. Dude, the fact that, okay, so the plane that we take, okay, we take this plane to Washington. That was the fucking plane that blew the door out. It was the exact plane that we were on. No way. Oh, yes way. How do you know? What do you mean? Because when it happened, I, had, I checked because it was, like, a few days before we were going to go on our trip. You remember when Alaska's door blew out of the freaking thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That same plane? We were supposed to be on that plane. Not that day, obviously, but it was that plane. What the Isn't heck? that crazy? Yeah. That Alaska plane. To be honest, I would have took a dub for you. Like, I, well, it would be an L and a dub, but I, I would have just, like, unbuckled my seatbelt or something. Dude, because you'd be set, to be honest. You'd, ha- you'd have any brand Jake, car you'd you want. are you out of your mind? What? You're crazy. Did you know the people that were sitting there, like, didn't make it on their flight? 
But can you imagine if they would have made it, dude? Oh man, they would have been sucked into. Bl- Actually, I don't think they would have been. Maybe they would have. If sucked. they're, I think if they're over like ten thousand feet in the altitude, uh, they're gonna be sucked no, up. No, but the, sucked out. the seat didn't get sucked up. It was just like the cover of the seat. No, but, I know, I know. But if you're, if you're um in the high altitudes, then you'd get sucked out. I don't know what happened. I wonder if the guy came down, like the pilot, like yeah, he yeah, he did, he did. Down. Oh. Mm. They're on, I think they're under like 10,000 feet. Babe, but the freaking door still got sucked out, which means that if someone was there, right? I don't think the door got sucked out. I think the door like lost the hinges or something. It was a window, I think. It was an emergency exit door. Oh, hell no. Right? Or emergency. To it was honest, not an emergency room. Let's talk about the emergency, uh, emergency seat. So oh, I, fuck that. Dude, they make you sign your... I doubt this has ever happened where um, in, like an accident happens on an emergency... I mean, on a flight. And the person in the emergency flight stays the entire time Can you he's the first that? one to go out yeah I, or he or she is the first one to go out they're gonna go out i guarantee you Jake, but they have to like I, people, I signed my life away and i'm gonna help anyone that i can no help. babe like, the people that were on emergency exit it was where that freaking thing got blown out i'm not sitting next to an emergency Can you imagine no they wouldn't have they probably signed their life away before they got on that seat and then it gets blown out see i wouldn't have all the cars i wanted you <laughs> signed your life away because you sign your life away we can get on those freaking emergency seats so if you don't know, if you've never been on a flight, basically when you sit on the emergency seat, they make you vow to like say you're going to help in case of an emergency uh, guide everyone out the door. Like you're gonna, mm-hmm. pretty much when you're going on a school bus and there's someone at the front of the school, I mean, in front of the, the what's it called, the door, they're helping you out. Like you jump on their, on their palms and just jump out of the bus, like on the emergency door. That's pretty much what you have to do inside the airplane as well. So I'm not sitting next to that. We're fucking sinking. You think I'm going to stand there and wait for everybody to get out the plane for me to get out? Do you remember that in in high school? Like the, I mean, in school when we do the drills, the emergency bus drills, like you go out on the lawn and then you have to go in the bus. And then in the case of an evacuation of the bus, you have to go out the emergency exit. And there's someone right there, just two people. They're holding your hand and you have to jump. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, no. Are you kidding me? That happened at school? No, it's, it's a drill. But yeah, but we would do that. Yeah, you don't remember? I don't think I ever did that. It was in elementary more. I think I did it in, in middle school too, but they have to have their palms out like this. So there's a door, there's a guy right here, the guy uh-huh. right here, and then you just, the person inside the bus walks out and they jump up. And they have to h- jump out of the bus. Be so for real. You don't remember? It was like the no. fire drill, uh, the fire drill, like um, whatever they had for those, for the buses. Though. But babe, everything set aside, please never sit emergency exit because you also can't recline your seat and you're going to be miserable. <laughs> you do, they say that they claim you get a little bit of extra leg room, but that's it. Cap. And you also can't have anything on, like, with you. So, like, you know your purse? I don't even know if they let you keep your phone. Like, you can't keep you can't, anything. You can't stow anything under the person's seat. You can't have, yeah, so you can't have it. I'm mean, which makes sense. You know, you don't want, imagine that person that that thing got blown out of. They, their, dude, their bags, their phones, their, everything would have just, boop, out the plane. Yeah. Well, all right, I have a question. Would you rather have your, your luggage get lost or, your, like, your personal items? <gasps> I say luggage, to be honest. Luggage. You fuck the clothes. I don't pack anything in my luggage like that that I need. I do. Well, sometimes we have to fit the camera equipment. Yeah, sometimes. That's why I'm like, you know, that's been my biggest fear lately. Like, I've been really, really thinking about, like, when it comes to losing your bags and stuff. And I'm like, wait. That's why. you imagine? Yeah, that's why I would love to put my name and my address uh, on the tags of them. But then someone sees your bag. they're not returning shit to you, You don't think so? Yeah. Be for real. You really don't think. They see all that freaking money. In equipment right there? You think they're going to, oh, let me just give it back. There's security cameras in the back where they check the where they check the bag, so I doubt that they're going to steal and anything. you think that, you know, you think a freaking officer is going to go help you out, and, oh, I have the security footage? No, they're going to go catch someone with tint. Like, it's <laughs> they're not going to help you. Like, I feel like all of that is so, it's so messed up because what's the point? Like, what's the point of having cameras and all this other shit if it's like you submit a, a report and, you know, L.A. County is going to laugh in your face. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Especially L.A. County. Like, anything that happens there, they're just going to laugh in your face because they have such worse things to deal with. Oh, my gosh. Dude, the, someone's lost luggage is the last thing that they're going to That's tell, what I'm saying, yeah. I think, who was it? Oh, I think we were um, listening to the Impulsive podcast, and he was talking about how someone rammed into his car or something like that, and then he called <laughs> the police, and they were basically like, We can't help you out. Like, what the, <laughs> like, what the fuck are you calling us for? Yeah, no, it's so true. <laughs> like, they don't care. You have to really say, like, e- you better start Walking out with the limb so you could get an ambulance. If not, you're not getting any help from the cops. Uh-huh. Any okay. help. Um, what's, like, new things that are going on in your guys' life? Comment comment those down right now. Like, what's going on in your life? What's new? Uh, we don't really, like, engage with you as much. But I want to know. Like, I feel like if we if you guys had a podcast, we'd tune in and want to know. So let us know something like that. 
Yeah, let That'll us know what's going on in your lives in the comments. It's funny because last time that we had told you guys that we were reading, that we really do read comments, like so many of you guys Dude, tuned in. So someone was like, do you guys actually read the comments or just hard them? And then I replied, I was dying, bro. <laughs> no, you have to read them yeah. before you hard it. Because you know how you spam, like you spam, just spam hard, spam hard, spam hard. We actually read them. No. What if, you read them. Them? what if you read someone like gassing you or something <laughs> and you hard it? Yeah, I know. I actually have to read them before I hard them. You know, because then how are you going to heart something? What if it says something bad or something? Then you heart it in and then it falls on you. Mm -hmm. You know, not a good idea. Anyway. All right, Jakey, update us. All right. What's up? What's up? What do you want the update on? <laughs> okay. So now that we're talking about dealerships, do you want to tell them about our, I don't think we've ever talked about this on the podcast. Let's see. What is okay. it? Okay. Do you remember that time? I'm sure you remember this. Okay, so one time when it's hard that we keep coming back to a dealership talk. It's just like this it's is interesting. This we is like the dealership good, talk. This is a good story time that we have. So this was back when we didn't have a broker. Okay, back in the day. We'll get into the broker stuff after. But okay, back in the day when we didn't have a, a broker and I was thinking of potentially getting a car and I didn't like. I knew a little bit about cars, but like I didn't know fully. Like at the time, I just knew that I wanted the spaceship. You guys know if you watched our one of our old podcasts, but like I would call the spaceship the coops, right? So like the GLE coupe. And we were looking for them. So I had gone online and I had like searched up like white GLE coupe, like, and I searched it and they had said, I'm pretty sure I don't want to like put my finger fully on it, but I think it was the Asusa dealership that had like a white one, right? And I was like, oh, we're going to go look at it, right? So we show up and first of all, you know, this lady, she's sitting at the desk. Please tell me you remember this. Oh, I do remember this. No, it was, <laughs> was, was it Azusa, Azusa or Arcadia? Some shit like that. Oh, I think it was Arcadia. It might've been Arcadia. One of those is, uh, it starts with the A. It's either Arcadia or Azusa. One of those two. I don't know which one, but over there, right? Dude, this fucking, we got a story for you. Okay. So we show up, right? And this lady sitting in the desk and she's like, can I help you or whatever? And she's like an old lady. And we go up and I'm like, oh, we're just like looking to, you know, I want to get a, a car. I want an SUV. You know, what do you guys have? And like, you're a car salesperson. Like, sell me a fucking car. Like, don't just sit there looking at me like, well, what do you want? Yeah, I feel you like car, I mean? car salesmen are the biggest judgers. Dude, the worst. But, you know, we've met a few good ones, but like. There is more bad apples than good apples. So like if, <laughs> dude, if I was a car salesperson, I'd be so good at my job because I know the way that I want to be treated when I go into a dealership. But I think these people are just sick and tired of like everyone. And obviously this lady's older and she's for sure judging us. So she just, she's like, okay, so what do you want? Literally like that. I, I remember. And, I was and we like, looked at each other. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So in that moment, I was like, I'm not buying a car. Like, I knew it, but I'm like, I'm just going to waste this girl's time because that was so rude. <laughs> Dude, it was so rude because you, like, if she would have just, you know, been like, oh, yeah, like, what's your name? Like, anything else, I would have bought a car like where, right then and there. Where's the customer service at? Dude, it pissed me off so bad. I was like, I'm going to ruin this lady's day. Not actually, but I was like, no, I'm going to make her show me all her cars, you know, and I'm not going to buy a car because you were so rude to me. Like, that just gives me the biggest ick. So she's like, I told her, I was like, well, I want an SUV of some kind, you know? And at this point, I'm already kind of pissed off at this lady. So I'm just kind of <laughs> like not even giving her, not even small talk. Like it's just, she's just like, so she gets up out of her desk. Like she's so bothered that she has to get up out of her desk. She's a car salesperson. <laughs> and she's so bugged, dude. And I mean, granted, it was probably like 2 p.m. But like, are you for real? Maybe she wanted to go out on lunch or something. Nah, I think lunch is like a one or 12. She was just rude. And I don't even know where this lady was from. I have a good idea, but I'm not going to say it because if I say that country, then YouTube's going to fucking filter us. But she had an accent, so I couldn't understand most of the things that she was saying to an extent. Mm -hmm. So I was like trying to do my best and she gets up and she's like, okay, let me show you something. I, oh, what'd she say? She said, oh, I have something for you or something No, like no, that. no. You know what I think she was? I think she's German. Cause she oh, was I, telling I was going to say the R place. No, 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 no. I think she was German because she was explaining what the, what the cars meant and what they stand for. No, Jake. I'm pretty sure she was the R word. Oh, uh, maybe. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Because she gave me the same vibe with the, the Taylor people. Oh, okay then. Probably. You know? Yeah. And so, anyway, she was just so rude. And so she's walking, and she's like, okay, I have the car for you. And she shows me, like, like entry level, like, a used 20. Like, oh, I yeah, it was. It, <laughs> dude, just, like, the lowest trim. I think it was, like, a it was CLA. A GL, no, no. 
Was it? it yeah, was I think it was. It, was yeah, it wasn't even an SUV, bro. Uh-uh. Like I had just told her. And it's just, and I had told her like, I want a freaking SUV. And she shows me this. And I was like, this is way too small. I, I was offended. I, I believe the CLAs are the, are the smallest SUVs that, the, that Mercedes no, has. No, baby, it wasn't an SUV, baby. It was a freaking sedan. Oh, shit. And then she's like, oh, okay. But I was upset because I had already told her. And then you go and you show me that. Like, it's pretty much saying, like, you Dude, little ass fucking girl. Like, like your house shopping. If she's a real estate agent, your house shopping, you say you want a big backyard, nice house, whatever. You, you get a nice house with no backyard. It's What's just like the you're point? not even listening to me. Uh-huh. You're wasting my time. So I'm like, no, like, I need something bigger. So she takes me to see a GLC. It was like a GLC 300 or something like that. And those are like a mini or like a smaller coupe than the GLE. So it's like they're coupes, but like they're way smaller. And I was like, ah, this is too small. Like it's, it was really tiny. It's kind of like my mom's tracks, huh? No, your mom's tracks is a little bit smaller. Okay, so maybe a little bigger. And I was like, no, this is too small. And then she goes, oh, like, and then she goes, oh, okay, I have another one. And then she like starts <laughs> walking us like, but just so bothered and i'm like when i tell you this happened in like like a minute where she showed us these two cars and she's just like staring at us as we look at a car jake do you remember yeah i do this gives me nightmares i don't we should go back and mess with her again dude i was so (laughs) and like she would say little snarky things like and keep in mind we just walked in you know like we have not we haven't even had a chance to I don't even think she asked me for my name. Like, she didn't even tell me hers. Like, it was just very not the vibes. And anyway, she walks us up, and then I see a GLE coupe, the white one that I've seen online, like, on the set. And I was like, ooh, what about this one? She goes, you like that one? (laughs) (laughs) She could have just told me to go fuck myself. It would have sounded so much better. (laughs) Do you remember, Jay? I do. Oh, my God. So anyway, we look at the car or whatever, and... I think that's when we realized I didn't like the car. Yeah, you didn't at all. I was like, ah, this is too small, buddy. Like, I just, I didn't like it. I thought I was going to like the car. It was back when I thought I wanted the GLC coupe or GLE coupe, but I didn't like it. And I was like, oh, this is too small. Like, I I don't like this. And then she took us to see some old ass GLSs. I remember in the back, like she would take us to the lot in the back and she showed us like an old GLS. It was, I don't know, it's probably like. That bitch didn't even have like a no, babe. That shit was old, old. Uh Like old, like they had the older design and they redesigned them a while ago. Okay, I remember that. Like I do. Yeah, and then she had showed us that. And then at this point, dude, I'm not even talking. I'm just walking behind her. Because it's like she's not, she wasn't listening to us. Like she was just kind of like being so rude. And then she was talking about like, oh yeah, I have people come in all the time and they'll get these G-Wagons right here, four by four square. It was the four by four squares. Remember at the time? It was they had just released them. It was back when they weren't like recalled or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, they come in cash. Yeah. I just sold one the other day. And I was like, this is why this bitch is mad that she's throwing us around. And it clicked in that she, moment. She knows she's not going to get a G wagon cashed out. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it was. It was that like, she saw us and she was like, oh, these guys are, dude, I've been being blown up. I'm hey, so sorry. Me too. Me too. Um, she was like, oh, these kids are not gonna, they're not going to give me a G wagon paycheck. And she was so bothered. And I was like. Oh my! And then I remember at the end of that, she was like, "Okay, well, that's all I have to show you." And then we were, we're like, we were like left in awe, dude. I, it was like I think that was the worst experience we've ever had. And so we were like, "Okay, then that's it." And we just left. Like that was it. But I was so like that moment, I was ready to buy, and she fumbled. I I really want to go back and like if she's there still, we can be like um. If she comes up to us, we can be like, yeah, we've been here before, but we don't want I want you like to help us with our car and have yeah, someone else like, help us. Can I get somebody else, please? Because that was so rude. Couple G Wagon Square. Right in front <laughs> of her. She was so mean to me. And it's crazy because I feel like cars, sales places, really, like car dealerships, I feel like they need a better system because it's a lot of mind games. And I feel like the salespeople, like you're gonna get the deal of whatever mood they're in. And I remember when so this is just some advice if you're purchasing a car. One is get a car broker. Like, don't even go to the dealership. Just don't even do it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. Hey, take a sip of this, please. Sorry, sorry. It's not worth your energy. Like, it's really not at all. Because I remember one time, like the latest time that I had purchased a car without a car broker, a manager had come out because I was like, you guys are fucking out of your mind. Like, the pr- like the, the payments that they make you pay for this stuff, it's like, are you serious? Like it, the math doesn't even add. You're, you're, I swear you're begging for the lowest price and 
They can go at least forty, fifty dollars less. Oh, way more. Right. <laughs> way more. Like they're just don't let anybody make you believe that they can't do it because I promise you they can do it. Like I remember the manager coming out and he was like, "It's basic math. Like I can't oh bring your gosh." Oh, are you talking about that guy? I'm talking about that. What was guy. that guy's name? Uriel. I don't know. But we were trying to get my get a scat. What's his name? Your, I think it's Uriel. Uriel. Uriel or something like that. I don't even know his at name. At the Dodgin, at the Dodgin, um, that one's in in Arcadia. Okay, we're exposing people though. Oh yeah, no, fuck that, that one. Guy. That one is. Is it in Arcadia? It yeah, is. Yeah, okay, yeah. Wait, okay. no, I'm gonna literally say it because you guys please never go buy a car there. They were that guy was like literally trying to give Jake like a twenty thousand dollar market for a fucking scat. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah. So basically, what had happened is that time I was looking for a scat pack because I was tired of my uh my Mazda. Right, I wanted a new car. I wanted to be cool, like fit in, get a fast car, nice car, loud. And the scat was like my 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 budget at the time. Right, so I'm like, all right. And to be honest, it's not even my budget. I don't even know what I was thinking back then. But I was trying to get a scat, and we go to this dealership, and I'm I don't know why, but we we walk in by ourselves, like, I was expecting just no, to, like, talk about it. No, my dad was with us. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We walk in with your dad, and I was expecting to get, like, a cool deal because your dad's going to walk in with us, whatever. This guy is, like, making me put 20000 down. Um, <laughs> on, on top of that, I think, like, we had a cosign too, huh? Your dad had a cosign or whatever. I don't know, but... Twenty thousand oh, dollars down it was is Monrovia, wild. Monrovia, Jake. Monrovia, Monrovia. It that's what it was. Monrovia. <gasps> it was, and his name was Uriel. But I don't think that he's there anymore because I don't see any other reviews that he he was there. Anyway, this guy was a piece of shit, and like I feel like managers always feel like they're like the top of the top. Bro, I feel the managers like, swear guys, like they own the dealership. Dude, managers swear they could do the most and they can't do shit. It's crazy because it's like I'll never deal with the manager in my entire life. They don't know shit. They think they're the top of the top. They think they could give you the best price in the world. It's like stop dealing with those guys. They're a bunch of fools. Like just get yourself a good team and you never have to deal with these guys ever again. It literally is so annoying. You know what's funny? Oh my gosh. Okay, so one time when I was buying your truck, right? I had gone to the dealership and the manager was like the biggest ass ever. Per usual. We're exposing dealerships out here. Per usual, dude. So this happened at the Glendora dealership, right? And then this guy, I don't even know what the hell his name is, but he's not there anymore. I don't think he's there anymore. So I, we had a, a salesperson, right? He was like walking us around or whatever. And I ended up liking a truck. And he literally says it in front of my face. And he tells the salesperson, he's like, next time, don't go showing people our most expensive car in the lot. In front of me. Okay. Me, my dad, and my mom are sitting down. Our sales guy is you know, on his computer and the manager's oh. right there. And he says that. I don't think no I ever told you way. that. You never told me and this. He, dude, acting like he's like the biggest, baddest guy. And I couldn't believe the disrespect in that moment. Right. But our salesperson was so nice and he just stayed quiet and he just looked at us and he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, and then I realized like, yeah, th this guy really, I just want to see what this guy's driving. Was he, was he like an, um, a manager or was he a salesperson too? No, he was like the, the manager of the salespeople or something like that. Like sales executive or something. Whatever the fuck, some stupid ass bitch ass title. Like he basically can't do shit because when we went to the financing department, right? He walks in, he walks in, the guy walks in, he goes, hello, sir. Like. I just came to give you these documents. And I, me and my dad looked at each other and we're like, <laughs> you thought you were the boss. Huh? <laughs> I, dude, me and my dad just looked at each other because I couldn't believe it. I was like, you were literally just talking shit to this other guy and you're going to come and bow your head down to somebody else. <laughs> so that's my point is that like these managers just think that they're something. And like, it's so fucked up because a lot of people literally by their mood, like that's the price you're going to get. Anyway, he was that other guy was trying to get Jake like to do like 25 down, like 20 over, you know, MSRP, this crazy ass shit. And I and I remember looking at him. And I was like, you're going to make him pay twenty thousand dollars over MSRP for a scat, not a Hellcat, like a scat. Are you f like what? I'm so glad we didn't like go further because, dude, I would be stuck with the scat still for life. That's like 20. <laughs> For life can you believe that oh hell no anyway yeah that was terrible that guy was a brat he was such a brat and you know what the craziest part is that jake had called and he had told him like hey like you know this is my credit like this is my income you know can i get approved for it yes or no like i don't want to waste my and i time. think that's the biggest thing you shouldn't do like you shouldn't tell them what your credit is or what your your income is because then they're gonna they're gonna approve you but they're gonna approve you with like a high interest rate or they're gonna approve you with like Putting a lot of a lot of money down. No, I just don't think that they should go buy a car. Period. I think they should get a broker. Exactly. Don't don't ever go to dealership. Find a, a broker. Just search up like brokers near me, and then go to the one with the most reviews or something. 
broker near me what do you mean what no 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 or like online it doesn't work that way i think so <laughs> no it doesn't it has to babe finding a car broker is a lot harder than you would imagine i can give you guys my you know i have a few brokers but like one of my brokers and they're that's the only way you should ever be buying a car ever 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 like don't ever buy a car any other way mm. anyway I was going to talk about a different manager. I, we, dude, we've been through so many. Okay, which one are you going to talk about? There's a lot of stories right here, y'all. Oh, my God. Which manager am I talking about? You're talking about a guy doing the numbers game. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I was and I, not the one that Jake went to. This is a different manager. Dude, we've bought so many cars. Not just for me, but, like, his family, my family, our friends, and, like, everybody. We've bought too many cars. This is why we have so many interactions. This manager in particular, right? He was like, it's basic math. Like, I can't give you this payment if this is what the car is. And, you know, and I the time at the time I was like, wait, he's right. You know, like, it's all basic math. It doesn't add up. And this then is, you grow up and you realize. I think this is the Mercedes dealership. No, babe, this is, uh, what is this? Nah, this I, might have been my Bal Malibu or something like that. Oh, okay. Then, no yeah. Mind. No, this was a long time ago. And I remember him being like, yeah, like, basically, like, it's basic math. And at the time, I was like, wait, that makes sense because, like, if the car... No, it wasn't my Malibu. I had a good guy for my... No, no, it was my Malibu, but it wasn't the sales guy because I really liked that guy. It was the manager who had came and said that. Okay. Something like that. Or the finance guy, something, something like that. Anyway, he was like, I can't do it because of basic math or whatever. And I believed it because I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You know, math this and, you know, math makes sense. I don't understand math, but math makes sense. And then you grow up. And then you learn more. And then you realize that car dealerships have a different price depending on whatever mood they're in, depending how desperate they are to sell a vehicle. And everything changes, right? Yes, it is basic math. You know, obviously you can't ask for a $1 car payment for a $100,000 car. That would totally make sense. But they can always do more than they say they can do. Always. There is so much more they can do. There's the, the car is always like always over sticker or they could do out of hella warranties, bro. The warranties don't cost them anything. Dude, whenever they freaking offer you a warranty, don't even get that. Like every time I've said, no, I don't want the warranty. And then they're like, okay, I'll give it to you for 50% off every time. <laughs> so how are you going to give it to me for a hunt? Like, it's just the dumbest thing. And like, they really prey off of people's like feelings and depending you know, what mood you're in, what they see you in. Like, it, it, it all depends what price they're going to give you. And it sucks so bad. And I wish that cars were more like, because Tesla's like, don't you order your car online like Apple, like an Apple phone or something like I that? I think so. Yeah. And there's like one price. I, yeah, right? Is that what we're I, I've never ordered a Tesla. I, I have no so. clue. I think that's what I heard that like on, for Tesla's, it's, there's no negotiating. Like you get your incentives and then that's the price of the car and then that's it. And they ship to your what house. What the heck? Can all dealerships be like that? <laughs> because yes, while negotiating is you know it's cool that there is some room to play if you get on the shit side of that like you, you're screwed i know when you order a car online like you spec it out whatever and it gets you say it's like one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, but that's different oh then the tesla one no like that's different for ordering a car from like a dealership it, that's different than when you go and you get a car that's at the lot like for in, at least in my experience like anytime that we've tried to build it always comes out more like they, the dealership doesn't help you out as much because like the cars that are there the dealership orders them usually uh -huh. so with whatever packages they want to order them with right and they're trying to get rid of these cars because they're there but when you order one i mean there is no urgency to get this car out of the lot to get new ones in like at all so because I, I was gonna order a car but the numbers were so different. And I was like, wait, even with the broker. So I was like, wait, I'm just going to get something off the lot because these dealerships are dying to get these cars out. They're trying to sell. No, nah, what I was saying is like, say the car is 125000 You spec it out. So what you like, I think the dealership could still put like a sticker on there too, like above that. Oh. Yeah. That's, isn't it that like crazy? Because <laughs> if not, then I feel like everyone would be doing, building their own, waiting like six months and then getting everything they liked in the car. I think when like cars were crazy like in 2020 i think they were like still adding markups on maybe not now huh i don't know about now Dang, dude. i don't know but the dealership we went to had freaking like twenty thousand dollar markups on their cars like, are you guys out of your mind yep that was that was when the market was crazier remember like used yeah now used cars were so expensive dude nowadays you better not be paying for a freaking markup on a car it, even back then like it's just there's always a way around the markup unless you're trying to get like a bougie car that doesn't lose value. Like a freaking Lamborghini or something. Yeah. Which that's different. But like if you're just trying to get like a normal car, do not pay markup. It's crazy because that too, like dealerships will be like, well, 
you know, we have to put a markup because of the supply. The supply, like, shut your <laughs> dumb app. Like, it makes me so mad, Jake, because so that we went to this one dealership that, like, doesn't mark up their, their cars. Um, because he, the owner of the dealership just didn't believe in marking up vehicles. Like, he was just like, does it matter? Like, we're not going to mark it up. They didn't have the car that I wanted. Sucks. But it just goes to show that dealerships are just so greedy. No, I know, no, no, no. But there's, there's, they say like they don't do the markups, but they do other stuff on, in the papers. I've, I've, someone's told me, I forgot what they do. It's like, it's with the warranty stuff. I don't know, but. Oh, I'm sure. Dude, because they're all scammers. They, they flip it, yeah. They're all fucking scam. I'm going to give you $2,000 off, but I, Sorry. but I just put your wheels to cost $10,000. Like that type of shit. And they'll do it so often. Dude, I hate, I hate the car industry it makes me so upset because like yeah like the house industry isn't any better at all but like it's way less of a what mood am i in like how much how much am i gonna scam <laughs> someone today you know it's way less of that you're not gonna mark up a house like you mark up cars because the house is gonna get the value back but no years. but the house is different because like the house really does go up and down depending on the economy car dealerships yes by the economy but also by how much of an asshole am I trying to be today? <laughs> it really does suck. And because, like, obviously they know that people are in need for cars, so they can do it. But it just, it really makes me sad. The biggest takeaway that you can take from this is, like, we've made so many mistakes when buying cars. Like, we have made every mistake that you can ever think of. I put okay? $6,000 down on a car. And that's probably, like, what? You? Yeah, I did. You did not, Jake. You put way more down. No, it was six, I think. Jake, are you kidding me? I'm not going to expose how much you put down on that vehicle, but it was not On the six. Mazda? Jake, it was not six. What was it? Way more. Okay, what was it? It was six because no, I brought it wasn't. seven. Oh my, Natalie Cuevas. So I don't know not. how you're telling me. I have your paperwork and I remember screaming at you for it. I, I had $7,000 in my pocket and I, I paid six. Because he's like, I don't know. You, uh, you're probably going to need like $5,000. And then I was like, <laughs> I have six. And then I don't know. I'm such a. Bro, I'm like, I'm like the bait for Jake, car salesmen. Jake, I thought you had put nine. No, Are hell. Are you sure? I promise. And G didn't put any down? No. Oh, I thought you had put way more down for that car. So if mm. it was six, it wasn't that bad, actually. That was pretty Babe, bad. G didn't have credit. Nah, no, she did. Oh, then, yeah. Well, no, you know what? Don't even get me started on the Mazda because you guys got scammed in so many other ways. Dude, that's what happens when you don't go with the broker. You don't get as scammed. Yeah. We've had our fair share of scams. But you know what? I'm so glad. I thought you had put a nine on that car. If it was six, I don't think it's, I mean, it's pretty bad, but not that, that bad. I mean, I, if it was a Mustang, then I'd be like, oh, damn, okay, I got a Mustang. But it was a Mazda, dude. For, yeah, for a $30,000 car, that's ridiculous. Like, I feel like those type of down payments, I don't it even was, put them on my car. It was used, by the way. It wasn't new. <laughs> it wasn't new. It was used. Jake, we got so scammed. So fucking scammed. Yeah, I got it, and it had... I'm trying to think how many miles it had. I think it had at thirty thousand miles. Cause twenty nine thousand. Yeah, because you put thirty and now it's at sixty. Yeah, it had twenty nine thousand miles, and I'm bro, that's insane, dude. dude you're ridiculous, Jake. I oh my gosh, I remember telling you, I was like, Jake, please don't do it, bro. He said it was like twenty, it was like twenty six k. Because it always sounds better. That's what I'm saying. Oh my gosh. And then you gotta put like the the taxes, everything, the insurance, man. Another thing, I feel like. We just, a uh, financing is also like a, a, you know, a situation where like my parents love to finance, right? I, I don't think I would finance another car unless it makes sense because sometimes the financing payment and the lease payment are like damn near the same thing. And I hate how people say like, um, when you lease the car, it's not yours. Okay, then who, what am I paying for? Like, if it's not mine, then what am I paying if for? If I wanted it to be mine, I could buy it right now. Right? Yeah. Like people are so dumb. I think. Because obviously, like, the whole point of leasing is to lease for three years, two years, whatever, and then you return the car and then you get a new one, right? So people are like, oh, that's a rent payment or, or the, you're renting the car or whatever. It's like, yes, I could see how people see that. But, like, I'm not – if I lease a car, right, and I'm going to drive it for two, three years, and then at the end of that, I'm like, mm, I really like the car. I'll, I'll buy it out at the end of it. But if I don't like – it's going straight back. I don't care if I just wasted all that money on the car. Like the payments you used to rent it. Technically, you could still, it deducts the main payment. Yeah, or the if main you want to keep it at the end, right? If you want to keep it. But like, I, I, mean, like it's, I don't it, think it, I would. I don't think it works like that with houses. Like if you rent a house and then all that you've paid for it. it sometimes. It, oh, if really? You're if you're renting to buy. Oh, okay. I didn't, I've never heard of that's that. That's a certain thing. I didn't know about that either, but I just found out about it through my real estate agent. But 
Yeah, so with leasing, it's kind of like you're in that situation where you could buy it. Or if you're like, no, I don't want to buy it, then you don't have to buy it. Yeah, damn. But you should definitely just like contact a broker, let them explain it to you um, and really, you know, get a good idea for how this stuff works. Uh, but we've just had a f- our fair share of scams that have happened to us. And it takes you doing them for you to learn your lesson for sure. Like you need to get scammed a few times. It's just the you way do, it is. Like, hey, <laughs> you do. You need to get to. scammed a few times. You need to listen to car salespeople a few times to, to learn a thing or two. You have to turn upside down on some cars to finally figure it to out. To finally figure it out. Like, trust me, we've had our sh- fair share of upside downs. Like, we really have. Like, I'm still fucking battling with the one upside down. Like, that's why I don't want to. I don't want to do anything with my chug, bro. Because I'm perfectly fine right now. Like, I feel like we. You need to go through a few issues. To uh, you need to go through a few scams to figure it out. But you'll figure it out. And it's a whole process. But obviously, like. The whole figuring it out will cost you some money if you don't do it right. So try to do your best at not getting scammed by dealerships. Like don't all, don't listen to a thing anybody in that place has to say to you because nobody wants to see you win. They just want to win. Like nobody wants to see you win. I don't care what nobody says. I have yet to meet a good, you know, system at a dealership. I have not. And I feel like every time we go to a dealership, they hate us because we have a broker. So nobody can come up there and snatch us. Like, they freaking <laughs> hate us. Jake, have you noticed that? Yeah. They hate us at dealerships. Because when you go with the broker, like, you don't deal with anybody. Like, that's the whole point of a broker is that it's like a real estate agent. Like, you don't do anything. You just say what you want. The broker will basically put together all the vehicles that, you, you know, they found for you. And then from those vehicles, you go and you look at them and whatever you like, then Your broker is going to go to the dealership with you. He's going to pull out the vehicles for you, not a salesperson. Or if they work with a salesperson, you know, they'll contact the salesperson. They work it out. Like no one should even be speaking to you. It's just you and your broker. You don't feel intimidated. And if you get a good broker, chances are they're also not pushing you to purchase anything. So then you feel comfortable because that's the worst part about going to dealership. It's like, so what's your credit at? Let's run your credit. You know what I mean? Like that's just the worst so with the broker, you just save yourself all that. And I feel like I'm talking like an ad right now, but it's it's just like, it, I don't no, want I you think to, you're giving really helpful tips for people that are actually looking to car shop. Yeah. Like I just don't want you guys to get scammed and, and truly dealerships are just, they're mind games. You go in there you don't know how you're going to come out. And that's just not something it's not good. So definitely go with the broker. They'll show you all the cars you want. And then they work out the deal. We literally like you don't even have to go to the dealership. Like they'll literally ship your car to your house. You could like meet up to sign the paperwork at freaking a McDonald's or something. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so I showed sick. up to Mercedes to sign my paperwork because I wanted to oh. for the aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have to. Like I could have literally gone anywhere else and I would have just sat down and signed paperwork. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know this. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And that's why they really hate them. They hate brokers with everything in them. Every time we've showed up anywhere, like people are just like, if you, I have a question for you. If you were to pick like an ideal job, say this didn't work out, an ideal job, where do you think you'd pr- uh, fit perfectly? I think real estate. Dude, I think so too because I love when Nat does house tours and she, like when we do Airbnbs, those are like the, that's the perfect example. Like walking in a house, she's never seen it before, but she explains it thoroughly and she <laughs> explains it to where you're going to want to buy the house. I think you'd be a good ad person. I think I like sales, yeah. I, I really like it. And even, I- even on your sponsors, like you sell stuff really well. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really like, I think that's what I would be doing. Um, If not, if I wasn't doing real estate, then I would probably be with my dad. Working with your dad? Oh, oh fuck yeah. Oh, I know what Me you could do. Me and my dad Hell would yeah. be millionaires. I think so too. If you if you elevated your dad's business, that thing would be a million dollar business. I know, I told my dad, buy me a yep. million dollars. Actually, no, two. And I'll go work for you. <laughs> <laughs> two million. <laughs> I'll make us millionaires. It's an investment, Edgar. It's an investment. I swear it's an investment. Um, but yeah, that's our that's our whole car buying um, tip situation here. And another thing. Okay, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, okay. What? So you know that guy, Ramsey? Ramsey. Ramsey. Dave Ramsey? No. Oh, the, the, the cook, the chef. Yeah. Who's Dave Ramsey? Is that the cook? Isn't that Dave Ramsey the cook? Wait, 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 pause. That's the cook? Who's Dave Ramsey? I'm talking about the finance guy. I have no, I've never heard of him. Babe. Dave Ramsey. It's Dave. Gordon Ramsey. That's the cook. Gordon Ramsey's a chef. Okay, who's Dave Ramsey? I think he's, he's the finance dude, right? The glasses guy who like is always like, you guys have debt. 
The old man? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I know you're talking about. Like they always put like a Minecraft video underneath, and then yeah. they, his video. Okay. Okay. Do you know how he's always like screaming at people because they have like a five hundred dollar car payment, mm. right? Okay. What do you think about that? To be honest, some of his cases are true. Like if you're making a um, hundred thousand dollars a year and you're buying a fifty thousand dollar car, you're truly you're truly gonna be in debt. You're already in debt. Yeah. Like uh-huh. it doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up to me. But I just feel like there's dumb people on there that call. Like, to be honest, you don't need, I don't think you need his advice if you're, if you're like well off. Like there's a guy that called, he was like, um, I don't have any debt. He, I felt like he called to flex. Like uh. he's like, I'm in college. I'm 20, I'm 20 years old. I have no debt. I have 200 K in my savings account. Oh, get the Dude, fuck I was, out of I here. I was dying. I was like, okay. He's like, so you're calling because you don't have debt. And you want to get a nice car. And then uh, all the comments were flaming him like, bro's flexing. <laughs> That's like, hilarious. But like, honestly, what what advice is Dave Ramsey going to give that guy? Like, he's either going to tell him to get a car or not get a car. That's it. Okay, but I feel like this is a tough situation because I feel like a lot of people are on the side where they're like, don't get yourself in debt. You know, like, it's not worth it. But then there's also the other side where life really is too short, right? And I feel like being in a spot where it's like you don't want to spend you know, $400 for car payment, payment, which nowadays is like, what, like a $20,000 car with these fucking interests. So it's like, there's both sides, right? There's a side where it's like, don't spend a lot of money on things like save, 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 invest, invest, invest. And then there's the, but enjoy life a little, right? Yeah. I think, I think it expands more than that. I think like, okay, say you get the car that you want to enjoy and you don't have the funds for it, but you live once, right? Okay. So get the car. But then you also, when you get the car, it like expands into little bubbles where you have the possibility of it getting repoed. You have the possibility and of... And you have insurance, not just ins- the car. Like yeah. insur- you have other bubbles that you have to fill when you get that, when you purchase that vehicle. But... But, okay, because there's levels to that. Because, for example, let's say that you can afford a... I don't know. I don't even want to say M- MSRP because, like, literally, guys, that doesn't matter. Every car has a different price depending on the car. That's... It, it doesn't matter. MSRP doesn't matter. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say a monthly payment, right? Let's say that it's like a monthly payment of like 800 bucks, right? Wow. It's going to make you, it's going to make you, which is not even that wow, babe. Think about 800 bucks in this economy, okay? In this economy, what is an $800 payment? Let me think. It would probably be like a- An SUV? S- some sort of SUV. It doesn't even have to be a high-end SUV. It could be like a freaking, like a Honda Pilot is probably pushing 800. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's, and for families, most families need, the, anyway, whatever. $800, right? Okay. $800. So it's like a bougie, bougie car because that's going to most likely be a newer car. So they don't need a new car. They could totally get a car that's like half that price, use, and does the job. Okay? But this car, like this person is just going to love this car. It's going to make them really fulfilled in life. It's going to make them feel accomplished. They can afford it. Okay? They can afford this car. And... You know, if they didn't have this car, they could definitely be investing a lot more and set themselves up for the future, but they can still afford it and they could still afford to save a little, even with the vehicle okay. and the insurance. Wait, 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 wait. And the insurance, okay? And this car is going to make their entire day and they're going to wake up every morning excited to drive this car to work and they're going to work hard and they're going to keep going and they're just going to have this little bit of happiness. What do you think? I think they can excel further if they're high, if they're happy. Like if they're if, yes right yes 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 they yes. can excel further if they're happy because say they're happy they're waking up every single day they're happy they're like wow okay you're gonna be, if you're in a happier mood you're obviously gonna go further in that throughout the day but then you're going further throughout the, every single day uh, eventually in a couple of years you're gonna be at a happier peak than if you were like I guess saving up and being miserable because I I truly think like I'm not saying saving up is a scam but investing it is uh, the proper way oh yeah like saving your your money your bank account is a scam yeah I agree. But yeah, I, I really agree with that, Jake. Like, I think being happy is a huge thing. And if you're not happy in life and if you feel like all I'm living for is just to like make money and save and then like the same routine every single day. And like a lot of people end up finding themselves in a position where they're not. I feel like for me, at least when I purchase my GLE, right? Not even my GLE, like whatever, set the bougie car aside, right? Even when I purchased like my Malibu, right? It was... A, you know, the payments on that were literally like 300 bucks, which is a lot of money. But like, again, it's crazy. because I was how, making a lot of money. How bad I got scammed. Now I had a newer car, a new car. I had a used car 
with and more miles and my payments were higher than her payments. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think my my car was maybe like 300. I think after I had got like insurance and everything it was like 400, but like after everything. Yeah, so although it wasn't the bougiest car in the world, whatever, I was so happy. And it really like, to me, it motivated me so much because I loved that car so much. Like it was everything to me, right? So it would motivate me so much. I was so happy to film. I was like giving it, my a thousand and one hundred percent because I love this vehicle. You know what I mean? And it just made me a happier person. Now, here's the difference though. Now, if someone is working a job that isn't like mine, right? Or a job where you're your own boss, maybe it's like more of a traditional job. Will getting this vehicle, you know, change your life a lot though? Because you're you still have to go clock into a normal job. Or is it going to give you inspiration? Because like now I have one nice thing and I want more. So I'm going to figure out a way to make more money. And maybe that's leaving my job. And like, it just opens more doors. Like, I think that there's so much to that conversation, but I feel like a lot of these people that go on to these shows, like they get shit on so hard. <laughs> like, dude, I, sometimes I feel really bad because they get shit on so hard from th- not just Ramsey dude, right? Is it Ramsey or is it Porton? No, that's the other guy. Portnoy. Oh, Nah, you're talking about the, the pizza guy. Oh, no, that's a different guy. I don't know what the hell is. I know is. who you're talking about. It's an old man, and he has a talk show. But He's he, always screaming at people. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, you know, a lot of the times that people that go on there get shit on so hard. Like, you're an idiot, you know? Remember that other episode? Sorry, like, to stir. No, no, tell me, tell me. Where the other episode is like, the only time you should be going to a restaurant if it's another job. Remember? Yeah, like they were they were spending so much money. They were spending so much money. And he's like, yeah, you guys should be cooking at home, uh, saving up a lot, whatever. And the only time I should see you guys going to, a, uh, going to another restaurant is if it's working your other jobs. I was like, damn. Because they, they were like spending a lot. That's why it was They it weren't was a being show. smart. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, but that's different. No, no, I know. I know. But you're saying is like spend something to be happy, live, the, live in your moment. Yeah. Or but like, also being conscious, right? Instead of going and getting a freaking top of the line Mercedes, okay? That's going to be like $2,000 a month. Something that's, you know, more conservative, but it's a new car and it's going to make you happy and it's within your means, you know, and it's not necessarily the smartest thing because the car is a depreciating asset or whatever. And so it's not the smartest thing in the world, but it's going to make you happy and you can afford it. I think there's some sort of like go for it there, you know? And I think that's a little controversial because when you get into like the investing world, everyone's like, you should not be spending. You got an extra dollar, put it in savings. <laughs> and I totally get it. But like a, just sometimes you have to live a little because if I die today, like who's going to enjoy my savings? Right. Who? Like, not, not you because you're not, not there anymore. Not fucking me. So I want to enjoy a little bit of it while I'm alive and I'm healthy and I'm happy, you know? And I feel like. I feel like we struggle with that a lot too. I think so too. Yeah. And I think we've had to really sit down and be like, okay. We're putting all this cash aside, it is, but it's like, what if something happens? We need to enjoy some of it. Right. And that's why I got my Mercedes because we had this conversation and I was like, when is it going to be time for me to get a, a luxury vehicle? Mm. You know, and I was making, you know, well enough money to afford it. But I was just like, you're hesitant. Yeah, because like it's a lot of money, you know, and when you really think about it, it's to a vehicle that, you know, it's just going to go to shit. So. It's just not a smart thing to do, but sometimes you just got to live a little. And it sucks that I feel like on that side of like, once you get on that side of TikTok, I get screamed at every day. You want to know the, okay, so what you're saying earlier, like get the car that's like a little bit, it's not, um, it's beyond your means, I guess, but you're going to have just a little bit of money left. Um, You know, hype cars. Mm -hmm. His story is he bought a Porsche with only $20,000 in his bank account after like, he only had $20,000 after, after buying it, I think, or signing anything, Yeah. whatever. But that twenty thousand dollars for that car is not doable because that car is like what two hundred fifty k. Yeah, see yeah. that would scare the shit but, out of me. But he elevated his business from buying that car to buying. He has like five supercars now. Oh, because his business is cars, right? Yeah, that business. See, though. that's a little different though. Like if I went to go do that, I'd be the pickle because my business isn't cars. Mm. I don't know the first thing. It was social media. It was social media though. Oh, it wasn't cars. It, no, it's social media. Oh. See, I don't know how I feel about that because, well, him, like he knows a lot about cars. Mm-hmm. Though. That's different. But like, for example, me, I do social media, right? But that doesn't mean that I could just go buy a freaking Urus. Yeah. If the Urus isn't going to get make me the amount of money and, and just what is it going to do for me? You know, is it going to give me an image? Like people don't care about images. Like if I pop out with the Urus versus me popping out with my blazer, it's not going to change the way that pe- are people just going to be like, oh, she looks so cool. And you don't you don't care what people think. And and people aren't going to think anything. That's the thing. Like I that's where I feel like I have a little bit of confusion when it comes to the Internet, because I don't understand where that logic comes from. Right. If I go out and I buy, let's say a G-Wagon. Right. 
And I really want a G-Wagon. Not for the looks, because I just love the G-Wagons. But if I go out and I buy a G-Wagon, right, because I'm investing in my business, what is it really doing for me, though? You know what I mean? Is it just making people Baby. think that I have money? Or do I really have money? Bless you. Bless yeah, you. It, it, one of those, right? You know, it, so it's like, what what's trying to happen here? Unless I love the vehicle and I'm purchasing the vehicle for me and it's time. But what you're saying is, you know, like, it elevated his business. Now, if his business was like a car business, that's different because, yeah, you need tools. It's like me saying like, oh, well, I'm going to start a freaking photography business, but I don't want to buy a camera. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's different because if your business really is cars, then you got to do what you got to do. But for me, at least my business is not cars. My business is just me vlogging my everyday life. So I don't need to go buy a Urus or a G-Wagon to, you know, pop out and everybody's going to love me. It just doesn't work that way. Uh-huh. So I feel like a lot of influencers do that. A lot of influencers will go and buy the baddest, best car for social media because it helps what they do, but it, it doesn't. I've never looked at an influencer and been like, they're so cool because they have whatever car. I don't think I've ever done that in my entire life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. I have another big question okay, for let me you. See. What do you think about TikTok getting banned? I think... For the reasons it's getting banned, dumb as hell. Okay, what are the reasons? Like privacy stuff? Supposedly, but it's not that. I, I really do think that they are just trying to silence everybody. I, I do, and I don't agree with it at all. For my own mental health, ban that shit. Dude, I want them to ban it so bad. Yeah. Because I'm on it 24-7. Yeah, me too. And, like and everyone's like that, Jake. Yeah, everybody. My parents, my si- everyone is like that. They're, everyone is so addicted to it, it's really bad. But at the same time, I'm also being selfish because my my stream of income is not coming from that app, right? Like, I, I get uh, I get a little bit of money from there. I'm, it's not my income, right? So, if if it, I feel like if the table's turned, like, I'm getting so much money from that app, that I'm going to be hesitant. I'm going to be like, why are they deleting this app? Why? Like, I, I need this app, you know? And the guy's proving that he has a... He supported or he's supporting millions of people's jobs because I guess a lot of people are TikTokers, right? And okay. and like the cop, the most famous person on TikTok is Kobe Lame. You know him? No. You don't know Kobe Lame? The uh-uh. okay, he's the most famous person on TikTok. And I guess before he was like a a factory worker. Okay. And then he became the most famous person on TikTok or the most popular person on TikTok. And he did something like he created a, an image for himself and he has a lifestyle now. Like a crazy, I bet he's balling. Okay. But like that's what he's trying to prove. Like it. It's funded millions of jobs. Like that, they shouldn't delete it. You know, what do you think? What are you? What are your thoughts on that? Still, oh, and I agree. And I think so has YouTube, and so has Instagram, and so has every other app. I think them trying to ban it is a little fucked up because yeah, TikTok has been a really big eye opener for a lot of people for a lot of things. Right, it has been a huge way for people to spread awareness in so many different. Like, things. what about that car guy? Like, hey, what do you do for a living? Imagine how much money he makes, and then if they take it away, like, he doesn't have a job anymore. No, I agree. I, I fully agree. But not really, Jake, because these people could move to a different platform, right? It's more about people like the people that work behind, like the people that work or that are employed by TikTok. Like the actual people that are employed by TikTok. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. them. That's who's really, really losing their job. Because you can't just get a new job like the way that influence. I can just go post on another platform. They can't just go work for Instagram. I mean, they can, but you have to apply. It's a whole process. It's not... I'm more worried about them. Nah, but to be honest, bruh, the TikTok, the people that, like, review your content on TikTok need to be fired anyway, so. What do you mean? Bro, they be flagging anything. Oh, you're right. You know what? Fuck them. I'm yeah. just kidding. No, there's good people out there, but yeah. They're, they flag about, everything, bro. I know that I they're swear. at home in their PJs. Just <laughs> report, 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 report. Delete, mute. <laughs> like, and you know what? Yeah, actually, actually, you know what? After the music ban on TikTok, they can take off the app. It used to be so fun, Jake. I hear the same two songs all day long now. <laughs> like the same two songs. It used to be so fun. I feel like it did mid out a lot when they took all the music off. Dude, I, I know. I, I can't even listen to a, or like my old, old videos. I go back to them. They're like, all scroll. muted. They're muted. I'm like, damn. Yeah, it really did go down the fucking shit. And I, if somebody else, which I don't think, Jake, like, let's be for real. Do you really think they're going to take away TikTok? I don't. They tried to do this a long time ago in what, 2020? Well, they did pass whatever the fuck they passed, but I really think, you think no one's going to buy the damn did app? It? So many people are going to buy the app. Didn't they ban it? Uh, no, didn't they ban it in India? Remember, like, for a while, in the beginning, um, a lot of Indian TikToks would pop up. And then all of a sudden, they said that they were going to ban it in India, and then I didn't see any of them anymore. Oh, I don't know about that. It might not be bad anymore, but you don't remember that? That was, that was like mm-hmm. a crazy change in TikTok back then. No, I don't remember that. But I, I think that TikTok won't be leaving. I really don't. 
somebody's gonna buy that app there's so much future on that app and hopefully they fucking go work shit out with musical group or whatever the hell <laughs> and they bring my music back right that would make my entire life no more justin bieber Dude, it makes me so mad. It, that app used to be so good because of that. Reels on top. Nah, fuck Reels. I hate Reels. Reels is cool, though, but there's a lot of mean people. There's so many mean people on Reels. Like, I'm not even going to post on that place. Um, no, but I don't think it's going to be taken. I don't think it's going to be taken. And if somebody from here buys it, you better put that RPM up. Oh, man, please. Please put the RPM up so people can make more money. <laughs> then you're really helping people <laughs> with jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, we've been podcasting for a long time. Okay, yeah, let's wrap up this up. podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments that, uh, like, what's new in your life? Yeah, what cars? What cars do you think we're going to be purchasing? What do you think we're doing in a few weeks? And what do you think about the TikTok van? Yes, let us know in the comments. Know. We're going to be looking at those. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.